Hey what's up everyone, we're here on day 3 of a serial killer every day for the month of October. And on day 3, I give you Eileen Warnos. Also again, YouTube won't monetize my videos because of the content, so I need your help to share. Like the video only if you like it, if you don't, please let me know in the comments below what I can do to make it better. And subscribe because only 2.2% of you guys are subscribed. Now, with that all being said, here's Eileen Warnos. Roll that intro. Eileen Warnos has become one of the most famous of all serial killers, not because she killed a huge number of victims, nor because she killed them in an exceptionally brutal way, but because of the simple fact that she was a woman. Before her arrest, the received wisdom was that there was no such thing as a female serial killer. That was not true. There had been many female serial killers before Warnos, but they had mostly committed domestic murders such as poisoning their husband or killing the elderly individual. In addition, there were a few female serial killers who had acted as accomplices to men. Warnos, however, did not fit either pattern. She confirmed more closely to an image of a reckless male gunslinger robbing and killing victims in cold blood. It was no wonder that she sold the movie rights to her story within two days of being arrested. Of course, Hollywood would never come calling if Warnos had remained a petty thief instead of a murderer. Hers was the kind of life that the movies preferred to ignore. She was born as Eileen Pittman in Rochester, Michigan on February 29, 1956. Her teenage parents had split before she was born. Her father, Leo, later became a convicted child molester. Her mother, Diane, proved unable to cope alone. And in 1960, Eileen and her brother, Keith, were legally adopted by Diane's parents, Laurie and Britta Warnos. This failed to improve matters. Age 6, Eileen suffered severe burns to her face after her and her brother had been setting fires. Age 15, she gave birth to a child who was adopted. Her grandmother died that same year, apparently of liver failure, though Diane suspected her father, Laurie, of murder. Eileen dropped out of school early, left home, and hit the streets. It wasn't long before she started to work as a prostitute. She had regular run-ins with the law, mostly for drunk-related offenses. A brief marriage was annulled after her elderly husband took out a restraining order. She then served a year in prison following a failed attempt at armed robbery conducted while wearing a bikini in 1986. She met lesbian Tyra Moore, who became the love of her life. Eileen and Tyra set up home together, living off Eileen's prostitution. Eileen became a notoriously belligerent individual, often in fights and always carrying a gun in her purse. In her efforts to keep Tyra happy, she supplemented her income with theft, mainly from her clients. Sometime in November 1989, Eileen Warnos went one step further into murder. Her first kill was Richard Mallory, a 51-year-old electrician whose main interest was commercial sex and drinking. Warnos would later claim that she killed Mallory to defend herself against rape. In this case, there may have been some truth in it, as later emerged that Mulroy had a conviction for rape. Mulroy's body was found in the woods near Daytona Beach on December 13th, shot with a 22. In June 1990, another body was found in Florida woodlands, once again shot with a 22, and this time naked. The corpse was identified a week later as David Spears. By then, another victim was found, Charles Carscadden. Once again, he had been shot with a 22, and just like Spears, has last been seen traveled down the main Florida Highway I-75. The next victim was Peter Semi. The next victim was Peter Sames, who was last seen on June 7th, heading off to visit relatives. His car was found a month later, dumped by two women whose description approximately matches those of Warnos and more. Victims 5, 6, and 7 followed in August, September, and November of 1990. All of them were shot with a 22. The police were reluctant to admit that a serial killer was at large, 
but they finally agreed to release a sketch of the woman who had dumped Peter Symes' car. Very soon reports came in that the two women might be Eileen Warnos and Tara Moore. The police arrested Warnos in a biker bar in Florida on January 9, 1991. They then found Moore at her sister's house in Philadelphia. In the interest of saving her own skin, Moore helped the police by extracting a confession from Warnos. The ploy worked. Rather than seeing Moore charged with murder, Warnos confessed to six of the murders. However, she did not confess to killing Peter Symes, whose body was never found to this day. At this point, filmmakers and journalists fought for the rights to tell Warnos a story. Some portrayed her as a monster, others portrayed her as a victim. The truth of the matter seems to be that Warnos as a woman brutalized by her miserable life, but the murders were motivated by rage rather than, as she argued, by the need to defend herself. Certainly that was a verdict of the jury that sentenced her to death on January 27, 1992. Warnos spent the next 10 years on death row, while campaigners attempted to have the death penalty removed. However, in the end, Warnos herself demanded that the death penalty be carried out. She was executed by lethal injection on October 9th. 2002. That's all the time we have for today. I hope you liked the video and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on who you think the next killer is going to be. If you guys want to reach out, you can follow me on Twitter and I also have a Twitch channel where I go play some games. The link is in the description down below. Until next time, sweet dreams.